Hi, my name is Toby and today I'll be taking us through how we can effectively use the Boca Compass Data Analysis Software to analyze our data. On my screen is the Compass Data Analysis Software which has been already opened to save us time. And uh, the first thing to do is to load in your data. To load in your data, you click on File, click on Open, same way you open your Microsoft or uh, your files at Microsoft Office. You locate uh, the folder under which your data has been stored. My is under my desktop folder and I have the sample folder as well. And I'm looking at the long LP uh, method today. Samples have been analyzed in long LP method. I click and I click on open. So the first thing to do after you have opened your sample is to check if your sample has been well calibrated or not. So to check that, you click on you right click and you scroll down to properties. From properties, you locate the calibration status. Under the calibration status, we have two factors we have to look at. Uh, which is the lock mask calibration and the internal calibration. For the lock mask calibration, a value that is close to 100% is considered a well calibrated uh, sample. And for the internal calibration, a value that is less than 0.5 ppm is considered a well calibrated uh, sample as well. For this sample, we have a value of 0.167 ppm. So I'm going to close this and go back to our sample. So now we can start, we can start work on our sample. I mean, so now after that the, uh, the calibration status has been confirmed, we can proceed to work on the sample. And uh, to the right of my uh, sample is the heat map. The heat map um, visualizes the different compounds present in the sample. And to the right, uh, on the y-axis of the heat map is the mass. And on the x-axis is the retention time. Let's take a closer look at the heat, heat map. Um, we can see on the heat map some of these signals I mean, these signals, you can see some of them represent uh, the compounds that we're looking for. Why some of them are just mere noises, uh, mere noise uh, coming from uh, the lab work. Uh, so these are like some of the compounds that we're looking at and some are just uh, noises. So to avoid time wasting in trying to know which of these signals are compounds and which are noise, we look at uh, a study or uh, studies by last et al 2015 uh, let's look at the studies by last et al 2015 uh, i mean this particular study you can go through this uh, for more for more understanding on what i'm trying to do on what i'm trying to explain to you i mean in these studies they have been able to come up with uh they have been able to come up with a reconstructed density map that shows the map the mass and the retention time for compounds that are present in samples that have been analyzed in different methods. So here we have samples that have been analyzed in the short RP method here, and samples that have been analyzed in the long RP method. What this means is when you look, when you, when you want to work on a sample that's been analyzed in the short RP method, um, these samples are present at this retention time and at this mass. That's for the short RP and for the long RP. These samples are present. Uh, so what it's saying is these samples are present at this various masses and as this very retention time same thing applies for the sample so for today i'll be focusing on um, now be focusing on let's look at the gdgts uh, for the gdgts their retention retention time is between 52 and 60 and their uh, their mass is between about 1003 and uh, 1004 so we go back to the um to the compass data analysis software so I go back to my heat map and I try to make this take this to between 1003 and 1004 and I also look at and I also look at I also look at 50 and 60 so I can put the scale on this side as auto scaling or she So let's look at this. Um, let me click on this. Okay, for this, I have a peak here. So I click at the peak of the t at the, at, at the yeah. So I try to click at the tip of the peak. So what this tip is showing me is this. So I've been able to click at the tip, so I just try to 
see the mass is there so what this is showing me is for this for this compound i can identify here it shows me that it has a mass of one nine one two nine two point two four four two uh one three nine two seven oh two uh and one three one four two two five nine so what is left is for me to com uh to compare these masses with the standard uh, mass list that i also have this is the standard mass list you can always get this i mean you can always get this from your from your laboratory so i have to compare this and uh, see if this mass is present when compared to my standard so this is a standard mass list and let's not forget we are looking at core gdgt so we have core gdgt here and the masses that we are looking at is 1292.24 1309.27 and 1314.22 so it's not this it's not this definitely is the last one i can see that is the core gdt with the five rings so we are looking at this 1292.24 1309.27 i mean once you are able to confirm the first four numbers and the first two numbers after the dot you are good to go so to further confirm that what we have been able or what we've identified is, uh, is, is, is true, we can also manually input these masses. We can also manually input these masses by pressing F7. Um, then you click on extract iron chromatogram to see if it's actually present or not. Uh, and the masses are 1, 2, 9, 2. Point two four. Let me call on um one two. Okay, so the next one is one three oh nine. I have them written somewhere. Point two seven, and uh, the last one is one three one four. One three one four point two two. I mean, these masses are the masses of the uh different adducts. Uh, the 1292 is the mass of the uh, mass with uh, hydrogen had uh, with hydrogen the next one is with uh, ammonia and the next one is with sodium so you put a weight of 0 0.01 for anything less for any mass less than uh, 1000 use a weight of 0 0.005 but here we have above 1000 so we use a weight of 0 0.01 you had this oh i had it try so this one i can just click on this one and i click on delete so we have just this and okay it's going to take a while to load you observe a change here can you see the change so the change here you can see this there's a change the same time actually it's just a change in color you see it's the same time between 56 and 58 the same mass we have the same mass list here so the next thing i do is um I would rename. I love to rename my my uh, compound to make it neat. So I click on I click on this, and I go to rename. Uh, so the name is uh, the name is called GDT. You can also use them as just GDT. I love to use called GDT and uh, GDT, and I use five so that is exactly not just gdt that is for five and i click on okay so the name changes here so the next thing to do after you've confirmed that this is your this is a compound you've been able to confirm it from the retention time and from the mass from the from the mass from the from the mass we've been able to confirm that from the standard mass list the next thing is to do is to chromatogram compound manually so to do this what you have to do is you draw a base you draw a line from the base here to the to the base here so to do this sometimes it's nice when you enlarge or you zoom zoom out so i draw this to this base yes good i mean this is perfect <laughs> um so what next is just for you to repeat this aforementioned uh aforementioned steps to identify the other compounds present in your in your sample once you're able to identify other compounds and you rename the compounds and you have your compounds ready uh, i mean maybe you have 
the three rings, the two rings that you have, the 1G or you have the 2G or the core hack here or the whatever, whatever it is that is present and you have been able to identify and confirm with both the retention time and the and the, and the mass. Once you have done that, the next thing is to export your file into an Excel data for further processing or further analyzing. For you to do that, you have to click on compound list here. Compound list gives you a list of all your compounds. Just copy, right click and click on copy and you can post this or you can paste this on an Excel file where you can um, erase other unnecessary data. Maybe uh, you don't need the masses and you just need the area, which is mostly the uh, point of focus, the area. And um, you can continue work, but you can use this to to determine the population, to determine whatever it is I want to work on with your data. So thank you for your time.